question for you. How do you pick your prelude? Um, I start by looking at what the hymns are. Okay. And I, I read the readings. All right. And um, the, the hymn of the day. All right. And I see what type of, um, if, there's, if I have any piece that matches that then I choose it. And many times there isn't anything that matches, or I may have that particular hymn in another arrangement and may not want to duplicate it. So then um, from there, it just kind of, I pick what I like. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. So she, t she really is, if you didn't hear her say, she, she really ta looks at the liturgy that we're doing, the readings and the prayer of the day and, and all that stuff. To, to really sort of pick out the prelude. Um, I'll tell you what, just from sitting there, you put me in like a ha very happy spot. It was a very, to me, it was like a very happy prelude. And uh, gosh, I wish I could say that the sermon was going to make you happy today. Um, it, it's a tough sermon today. It's a judgment sermon. So... Um, that usually makes us feel uncomfortable a, a little bit, um, but thank you for putting me in a happy mood before the sermon it really will bring me down a little bit. And maybe it will bring some of you down too, hopefully not. Uh, thank you, thank you for uh, tuning in uh, tonight or today, this morning, whatever time you're tuning in. Um, I just want to draw your attention, or I just really want to talk about uh, a couple of things, actually two. Uh, next week, Sunday, hopefully you got mail, hope you got a letter. If you're doing emails, you also should have gotten an email on it. And it's going to be, we're going to vote, we're going to have a congregational discussion and a congregational vote to see if we can get the air conditioning uh, fixed in, the, in this part of the building here. Um, today, not too bad. We have fans going all over the place. It is a little sticky. Uh, we're just sort of happy we're not here tomorrow or Sunday where we're supposed to get some scorching weather here. So uh, I can't imagine if we had a f you know 50 people in this church here and how everyone producing that body heat, what it would be like in here. So please, you, you can't vote if you don't attend. You know, you can't, there's no written in votes. There's no uh, phone in votes. Uh, you have to be there. Um, so that will take place after our uh, worship service. Um, outdoors, our outdoor services starts on Sunday at 8.30. And it's over in the north parking lot. So, uh just want to call your attention. Uh, Missy, you're going to have to help me out here. Vacation Bible School, where are we at here? Are we closed? Nope. Are you kidding me? We're still offering Vacation Bible School to people? Did you hear that? We're still offering Vacation Bible School. And the coolest thing is, you've heard me say it before, you don't even have to be in the same state to take this Vacation Bible School. Before, you have to probably, you know, make sure it works out with your mom and dad's schedule. You probably had to live close. You had all these other things. But to this time, this year, you don't even have to be. We have one person that I know of that's doing it in Wisconsin. Okay, we have three people. Missy has just sort of gave me the three people from different states. S New York? You mean the internet goes all the way out to New York? Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, I gotta better make sure my hair is combed if we're gonna go all the way out to New York here. I mean, how cool is that? You know, and again, that's what God does. That's what this, uh, the God that we worship does. He, he takes really bad things, and believe me, COVID-19 is bad. I don't want to make light of that at all, uh, at all. But there's good things that come out of this that, that, you know, instead of closing down vacation Bible school, we're opening up and we're reaching more people than we would normally do. So, uh, Please make sure you get your calls into to the church office. We have to get your supplies out to you and mail you those supplies. So it's it's getting close. It's getting close. What's our where's our cutoff? Where are we gonna? Do we have a cutoff or?
August 27th is the, all right, so uh, just, um, just be aware, even though we're looking at that week of July, you could view this again at every, any time. Um, other stuff, is, it sort of goes with my children's sermons, so I'm going to leave it at that. Am I missing anything? All right, let's calm our hearts and our minds to prepare ourselves to worship our awesome and great God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. All right, so what Elodie just spoke is this a plea for us. It's a plea to our God that please have mercy on us. Please forgive us. And if that's where it stopped, just this plea, we would be in a tough, tough strait. But it doesn't stop here. Listen to this. Here, listen to what God does to our pleas. Listen to what he, when he hears them. He, this is God speaking. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we are dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, by God's grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Th great news. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray the prayer of the day. Faithful God, most, most merciful judge, you, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first lesson is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. 44th chapter. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, 
I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 86. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love towards me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Our second reading is from the book of Romans the eighth chapter. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to give a live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the ones who, one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inward, inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes what for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do we have a song? No song. Okay. 
All right. All right. Parents, out of the way. Adults, out of the way. Children, get close. All right. Take a look. Uh, we're going to do like, it's one of those I spy games, sort of, but I'm not even going to give you the picture. I want you to take a look at our church and see if there's anything different that you notice within our church. I'll wait for your answer. See anything different? If you take a look at this side over here, and I should probably move this out of the way so you can see it, we are going to have a baptism this Sunday. Levi, James, Martin is going to get baptized on Sunday after the worship service. Uh, on, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, and and, and, and in, we have all sorts of things. We have the baptismal candle, which we don't usually light during the regular service, but that's going to be lit, so that's going to be pretty cool. Um, over here, we have the baptismal font. We bring that out so everyone can see it, and that's where Lev uh, Levi is going to be with his parents and sponsors. Um, there's water all ready to go. There's a candle all ready to go. There's a little white, you know, little white cloth that he's going to get. Um, that's pretty exciting. It's, it's exciting for, for Levi. It's exciting for his parents um, and grandparents, too. Um, we have a banner over there, and I want to make sure that you, you see that banner. It's, you see it as child of God. Um, and I, I'm wondering, make sure, you know, I'm wondering who's saying this, and, and I want to make sure you understand who is saying this. Is it Levi's parents that are, are going, child of God, or is it God going, child of God? Which way? Does it, does it go up? Like, here's my child, you know, here's a child of God. God, please, you know, protect it. Or is God going, ah, that's my child over here. What do you think, up or down? Which way? Oh, well, make sure you understand, it always goes down. God is always going down. Okay, this is God. Even though we like to think that we're, we're presenting this child to God, we're not presenting this child. God is presenting this child to us. And God is saying, this is my child. Levi, take a look. And that's what we're going to do. We're, and, and it's their parents and God saying, hey, look at the people here. This is, this is Levi. He's a child of God. It's, it's our way to publicly pronounce that. It, what, it's, what God says and what God does is it's, it's our way of publicly proclaim that to everyone who wants to hear. There will be a few people in this church, but we're publicly proclaiming it to you too. This is Levi James Martin, God saying this is a child of God. The other reason why I'm sort of excited about it, did you, does anyone know, has anyone seen anything different in this church? How about if you look at me? You notice a little different? What I have here, this is called a stole. And uh, pastors can wear the stole once they get ordained. We, you, you notice I haven't worn the stole you know, ever since I've been here. Only when you're ordained can you wear a stole. And, uh, and if you remember, last, sun, or last Saturday I was ordained uh, at my home church in Lockport, and that was just a beautiful, beautiful night. Uh, it was a great ceremony. It was a really sort of a neat thing. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I'm excited. It's not my first baptism, but it's my first baptism as an ordained pastor. And I'm really excited about that. So I can't wait until Sunday begins because I know that something cool is going on. You know, my, my officiating at it will just be like a side note, but God's saying, that's my child. And, and everyone else saying, this is God's child. We're going to publicly proclaim it. And chances are your parents did the same thing. Let's pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for what you do. I thank you for always coming down, always coming down and loving us and, and forgiving us and giving us mercy 
and just, you know, watching out over us is your action, not ours. So I just ask that you continue to do that. I ask that you continue to shower love and, and health and protection on the little ones here that are watching it today, and also their parents. Watch over their families. I ask this in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. It's a scary gospel. I'm warning you right off the bat. I should have a warning flashing. Careful, careful, careful. This is a judgment gospel. And you're going to hear about God's judgment. But, you know, that, and that should make us a little nervous. But the one thing that is so good is, is it's just not me. I'm not in charge of the judging. It is God who is in charge of our judging. And we should say amen to that. Because you, we know that our God is a loving and just God, that he will judge true and, and, uh, and well versus, say, me. So let's hear what uh, Jesus says about this parable on judgment. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seeds in the field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Then do, do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, 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 no. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat among the, with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And then at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds, the weeds of the field. And he answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil." And the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. And the Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father, let anyone with ears listen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord our God. All right. Remember what parables are. Are they like everyday sort of uh, thought process with a lesson in there? So when the people were listening to this parable, they were, they were following along. They were following along here. And, and, and actually this practice... Um, occurred in ancient times. There was actually a law that would prohibit it, 
prohibited this from happening. You were not allowed to sow weeds into your neighbor's field. And if you did, if you were caught, you would go to jail. So that would lead me, at least, to the question is, why would someone do this? And the thought during ancient time here was, and maybe even today, was that there was a finite amount of good. There was just a limited amount of good, a certain amount, and no more or no less. And so if someone was prospering, then someone must be having difficult times. And instead of rejoicing in another's prosperity, there was jealous thoughts that they were taking more than their fair share. And maybe, maybe since they were taking more than their fair share, maybe they needed a little weed thrown in their field. If you recall last week, we talked about the parable of the sower and how we were to come alongside Jesus Christ and throw his love, his mercy, his grace as recklessly and as extravagantly as he did. We are to throw God's word and not worry about growth because that's God's job. And today we read about the parable of the wheat and the weeds. And next weekend we will read about five parables. So if you like parables, you want to hang out in Matthew chapter 13 because this is where the parables are. And like I said, gave you a warning that this is a judgment parable. And I wonder if it makes you feel a little uncomfortable because I know it makes me feel a little uncomfortable. This is not the God I wanted to be preaching about. But I can't get around chapter 13, verse 41. It says, The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. So, in reading that, there must be evildoers in this world. And believe me, Trust me on this, I'm in all in favor of taking evildoers out of this kingdom. Certainly that can't be me, a believer in Jesus Christ. Heck, I will even help the angels do do this, just like the servants who wanted to pull the weed out now. And I wonder if you're like me, quick to recognize, quick to judge who the weeds are. Certainly, it's those liberal Democrats. Yep, yep, those liberal Democrats. Or or maybe it's those conservative Republicans. Or maybe it's those who wear masks or not. No, 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 no. It's those protesters. For sure it's the protesters. Especially those who want to tear down monuments. They are certainly the weeds. Are you like me so quick to label, so quick to point out the weeds among us. But what does the sower tell the servant? The sower says, let both of them grow together until the harvest. The sower says, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let them grow together. And maybe, just maybe, the sower is not as quick to recognize the wheat from the weed as we are or as the servants were. Let me say that again. Maybe the sower is not as quick to recognize the wheat from the weed as I am or as we are. Maybe we too should not be as quick to use our labels. Are we really sure that they are not wheat also? But all evildoers is only part of this phrase. The angels, it says, will collect out of the kingdom all causes of sin also. And actually that's the first part of the phrase. All causes of sin and then they will go after the evildoers. 
can this mean that there's possibly the, the, uh, the weeds that are growing, those weeds growing maybe even in me, even in us? And if we believe in how or what Martin, Martin Luther describes us as 100% saint and 100% sinners, we can't ignore this. Yes, weeds is, are growing in me also and in you too. And this weed, this sin is going to be removed from us also. Maybe it's that sin of action or lack of. Maybe it's our sin of thoughts. May, I, I, I just have a feeling though, and it sort of it says in the parable here, that I have a feeling when those weeds are removed from me, that it's going to hurt. The roots of these sins are so intertwined with the good, it will hurt when they are separated apart. And maybe that is why Jesus says, wait, no, 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 no. Let them grow together. Maybe this parable is really about patience. Yes, one day judgment is coming. And a pastor friend of mine prays for it to come quickly. And I get that. I truly do. All the messiness of this world, all the messiness of this country, all the messiness of the church will be removed. COVID-19 will be gone. The plea for black lives to truly matter will be gone because they too, like all children of God, will take their place before him. All of these divisions that just rack our country will disappear. Could you imagine that? But judgment will occur. Later, Matthew, in his gospel, describes the separation of the sheep from the goats. And today, the parable, this parable of the weeds will, be, uh, weeds will be separated and thrown into the furnace of fire, where they will, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you really want to wish this on anyone, even on the ones we label so quickly? How many of us know someone who does not know Jesus Christ? I think we would be wise to go back to last week's parable and start throwing and start sowing love and grace and mercy. I think Jesus is teaching us patience here. Heck, Jesus even waited to explain this par parable. He waited for a couple of uh, parables. It doesn't just, the story doesn't continue like we did. We would have to wait before he, he explained this. And maybe we need to wait also. Maybe we need to learn to live together. The apparent saint and the apparent sinner, because even Jesus is not so quick to notice who is who? Because what we don't see is what Jesus sees. Above all else, Jesus knows our heart. He is the author of our lives, and only Jesus knows where those lives will lead. Only God knows our potential for redemption. I think back on my ordination last week, and I want to truly thank you for all of your words and letters of congratulations. However, if I was truly honest with myself, for all the ones who congratulated me, there would be a large number of people who would say, really? Tom Reddig? Really? I wonder if they knew me earlier, you too would want to pull me out helping the angels may be too quick to recognize me as a weed, but really, maybe a wheat. Judgment is God's job, not ours. God did not equip us to be gardeners. And if we try, we will probably destroy both. 
But this is also not a call to be passive in the face of evil. Where there is wrong, where there is injustice, we need to take action. Sin can be called out, can be forgiven, can be redeemed. And there is no way I have the ability to remove all the weeds living inside of me and the world, but I can work on a few knowing that evil is only temporary. God's love will always endure. This world isn't perfect. This country isn't perfect. This church is not perfect. But we are called to throw seed. We are called to show God's love, to show God's grace, to show God's mercy as faithfully and as as obediently as possible. And because we can place the harvest in God's hands, not ours, we can always say, God is good. And all the time, amen. Let's listen to Sarah and Pam play our hymn of the day. We're going to sing verses 1 and 3. We plow the fields and scatter. Let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's God's only only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
instrument of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit. We pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness be, may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea, so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open your, our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints close to us, Viola Strout and Paul Hansen. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the safety of those who travel. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the divisions in our country, place our hope in you to heal these divisions. Where we need to repent, help us to repent. Where we lack understanding, give us wisdom and openness to understand. Where hatred and fear are sown, let us bring back your love and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy One, we give you thanks for those who celebrated a birthday this past week. We are grateful to be, about, be a part of their life and ask your continued blessing upon Jim Pendergrast, Linda Volter, Sean Mischewski, Lori Scoop, Daniel Rickey, Eileen Shaw, John Kaler, Brent Ziegler, and Carolyn Hayes. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Living God, we also thank you for the gift of marriage. We thank you for blessing the wedding of Scott and Jamie Sebastian and Mark and Sue Wolf. Please continue to instill in them love for each other and love for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. All right, it's time to transition. So prepare your table and we'll prepare ours.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with this church and with the churches on earth and the hosts of heavens, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in memory of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given to me, take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for me, take and drink.
Let us sing together our communion song. Let us break bread together. Number 471. May this body and blood of Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Halle, halle, halle. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and the cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with, with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We'll be singing our sending song here, Come Ye Thankful People, come uh, verse one and verse four.
Okay, how about you guys who are, are watching this? Let's have a, a big round of applause uh, for the people who are putting this production on. And we have Sarah singing up in the balcony here. We have Paul with our sound. We have Pam playing uh, the piano. We have Missy doing all the tech stuff. And we have Elodie as our congregation. So let's hear it for them. They do such a great job every week. So you too, let's go forth and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.